Uh, thank you very much and welcome to everyone today on our webinar, Steam Sterilization Microbiology and Autoclave Performance Qualification. We have quite a full agenda today. We'll be going over uh, what steam sterilization is uh, on a microbial level. We'll do some um, uh, refresher training on uh, microbes and how uh, they are uh, quite an issue for us uh, in the pharma and med device industry uh, when it comes to validation. Uh, we'll go through some autoclave performance qualifications expectations. Um, I'll also go through some regulatory and GMP requirements for steam sterilization. I'll run through some process verification tools for use in an autoclave, and then we'll finish up this session with some common questions, uh, problems, and a review of the CGMPs when it comes uh, to this topic. Uh, to introduce this topic, um, all of you are most likely in the pharma industry, biologic industry, or med device industry. Um, we all deal with uh, steam sterilization or sterilization uh, in general. Uh, many times uh, as uh, new hires are coming in, uh, it's one of the first things we do when they come in is to explain to them um, how microorganisms can really affect our products. Um, microorganisms, um, obviously, as everyone knows, are the agents of contamination, infection, and decay. Um, they have been uh, quite an issue uh, for as long as uh, history can remain. Um, it became necessary for people even uh, early on in the early, uh, early on uh, medical uh, industry uh, to become necessary to remove a lot of these uh, microorganisms from materials and areas uh, because they became uh, such an issue. Um, there are, there have been some uh, kind of unique approaches uh, to removing microorganisms uh, in the past. Um, as, as we all know, there has been, um, you know, a, a lot of uh, technology advances uh, when it comes to removing microorganisms, but uh, in the past, they did practice salting, smoking, pickling, and even exposure to sunlight uh, to remove a lot of these microorganisms. Um, in the mid-1800s, the scientist uh, Lister had developed um, what he called aseptic techniques, uh, which was extremely important uh, when it came to um, the medical industry uh, with patients and surgeries, things like that. Um, he actually uh, uh, developed the aseptic technique to prevent the contamination of surgical wounds. Um, prior to this, um, there had been a lot of hospital-acquired infections or nosocomial infections that really caused death in about 10% of the surgeries. So people would go in to have uh, an operation and, you know, um, hopefully uh, would not get uh, a secondary infection that would cause death. Again, uh, during the delivery process uh, of children, um, up to 25% of mothers actually died in hospitals due to infection. Um, so it became uh, quite important uh, for a lot of uh, these hospitals, doctors, and uh, the med industry to really get a handle uh, on controlling uh, microorganisms. Just a quick comic that I like to share. Uh, this is, uh, you know, a person going to uh, their uh, psychologist, uh, and he's saying, Joe, do you still hear bacteria talk? And uh, the patient is saying, they don't talk, they sing, we shall overcome. And a lot of my validation engineers uh, that I've been colleagues with for quite some time uh, really struggle with uh, the amount of uh, microorganisms that they have to deal with um, that still kind of rear their ugly head when it comes to sterilization validation. Um, they think they might have it uh, taken care of, um, but they really do uh, persevere. And, uh, you know, these organisms not only present a problem um, in the sterilization industry, but also just with the environment as well. I do another webinar on environmental monitoring, and once you get an, uh, you know, an environmental isolate or contaminant that really um, you know, gets in your area, it does become quite difficult to remove it um, without the proper procedures. Some autoclave and sterilizer regulations. Um, I found some uh, GMP regulations that are worth noting. Um, you can take a look at the EU GMP Guideline Part 1, uh, annexes 1, 15, and 17. They have quite uh, a lengthy uh, list of regulations when it comes to autoclave and sterilizer regulations, uh, as they do in the CFR, uh, Part 210, 211, and even in Part uh, 11 uh, when it comes to autoclaves and uh, electronic records and signatures. 
So you can find some information about uh, autoclave and sterilizer regulations there. Um, and of course, the FDA has uh, two great guidances uh, for our industry, uh, the sterile drug product produced by aseptic processing and also the documentation for the sterilization process validation, which is uh, definitely a good read.